Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me, James. Hope you guys are all doing well and I'm back with the Scorched Earth Explorer Note read-through from Raya. Before we jump into part two, I just want to remind you guys I'm now on Twitter and if Twitter's your thing and you want to keep up with news and updates on the channel and when I stream over on Twitch, then drop me a follow there. Thank you. And when we left Raya yesterday, we found out that she'd become quite the marksman under the teachings of John Decaia and as training, she offered to put down some of the beasts that had become ill as an act of mercy. So sit back, relax and enjoy part two of Raya's Explorer Notes from Scorched Earth. Despite my best efforts, I know that I have strayed from the teachings and customs that I have learned so meticulously back home. Out of necessity, I have adapted it to both the needs of Hathor's new followers and the circumstances we all face in this desert. For example, Celebrating the gods with feasts and festivals in their name would be wasteful. This sacrifice is particularly unfortunate, for my students deserve some sort of reward for their diligence. Perhaps I can still organise a modest celebration of some sort. In fact, maybe the whole village should have one just to rise everyone's spirits. Even our venerable captain might enjoy that. Ah, but I ask for miracles. I trust our captain's judgement on matters of defence, but I still feel ill at ease with his decision to sally against these mantises. It's not that he's left the village unprotected. Quite the contrary. I fear that his own contingent is too small. I know that I should not be concerned. He personally vouched for the calibre of his team, and I have more immediate priorities. Our walls and gates need repairs, our infirmary needs supplies, and our morale needs bolstering. I have been scrambling to and fro with such constant urgency that rings have formed beneath my eyes. Yet when I finally earn a moment's respite, I am restless with worry. The people of Nosti come from so many different places, and they all have different ways of thinking. On occasion this incites conflict. Several weeks ago, two newcomers come to blows over a long-standing feud between their home nations. And just the other day I had to harshly discipline one of my own disciples for harassing the villagers who worship that wooden cross. One time a man even challenged me to duel for Nosti's leadership. Yet them same two people who engaged in fisticuffs now work to repair our western gate. And it is stronger for their combined efforts. Perhaps that's why the gods have brought us all here. To help us understand each other. For days, I have prayed for both Hathor's compassion and Sakmet's healing powers. And for days I have waited. I have faith that they have heard me. When I first laid eyes on him, I thought for sure he was dead or dying. But the gods have not yet taken John to care away from me. My mind knows that I have other responsibilities to attend to, that I cannot afford to spend more time in this room. Yet I know that if I attempt to attend to my duties, my heart will interfere and I cannot neglect it. Not any longer. Without question, it's Hathor's divine will that sent me here, not only so I could spread joy and compassion, but so I could understand her love. I thought I knew it before. I loved my family, I loved my fellow priestesses, and I love all of those under my care here in Nosti, yet only when I finally surrendered myself to it, when I let it rush all over my body and carry me like a current of a great river did I truly understand it. Only now can I claim to embody Hathor's teachings, thanks to John Decaia this warrior from a distant time and place. And now, together, we can turn this desert into a paradise. The mood in Nosti has been so jubilant lately that I think I may just hold a festival after all. And why not? We have plenty of cause to celebrate. With the Mantis threat diminished, our scouts were able to establish an outpost in the north, where they've discovered a wealth of thick black oil seeping through the cracks in the earth. Thanks to this bounty, We've been able to create amazing new tools and fill our storehouses to the brim. Our festival would hardly make a dent. I'm sure my beloved captain will disagree, ever the dutiful warrior. Fortunately, I could be quite convincing where John Decaia is concerned. And for one day, we deserve to supplement worry and duty with song and dance. As I watch Gaisha's team construct the curious bladed tower that is meant to harness the power of Shu's winds, I cannot help but marvel at how far we have come. In such a short time, Nosti has risen from nothing into a true city, with wonders that would make even the great pharaohs envious. For all its storms and monsters, this desert grows less threatening to us each day, and fewer people are forced to suffer and die by its hand. Perhaps one day, no one will. If we can achieve that, 
then every hardship and every sacrifice we have endured will have been worth it. Over the last few days, the lights of the Great Obelisk have been pulsing with a rhythm and intensity that I have not seen before. It is a beautiful, soothing sight, particularly at night. It almost looks like they are singing a song to the stars above. Surely this is a sign of the gods' favour. Hathor is offering us her blessing. Having another festival would be exuberant, so I have organised a special round of ceremonies and prayers after dusk instead. Thus far they've gone wonderfully, and everyone has left with renewed faith and vigour. I wonder how long this display will last. Sometimes, I wonder how John can carry on, with no faith in a higher purpose or power, and eyes that see threats everywhere. Even when we are safe and secure, he insists on sleeping with a weapon at arm's length. It is no wonder that he suddenly believes the obelisks could be dangerous. Fortunately, I have enough faith for the both of us. I have faith that he will protect us from the flying lizards that have recently appeared. I have faith that the obelisks would never harm us. I even have faith that I shall forgive his constant prodding on the latter. That final matter might require some additional effort on his part. However, he has been simply relentless about it. What did I do wrong? Despite every trial and tribulation, I kept my faith in Hathor, Amon Ra and all the gods. No, I did more than that. I gave them new followers, I built shrines for them, and held ceremonies for them. So why? Why did the obelisks light up the sky and call down such a terrible doom upon my new home? Why would the gods tear the very earth asunder and send all that I have built and cherished tumbling into the abyss? Where did I betray them? Were it not for John, I would not even be able to ask such questions. I would be just some dead fool whose last act would have been to beg for salvation from the very gods who have forsaken me. My mind is filled with the dead. I see the smiling faces of my students, eager to learn. I hear Gaisha's laugh, deep and merry. I see the outstretched hand of John's trusted lieutenant as she fell into the darkness below. John tells me not to blame myself, that what happened was unpredictable. Yet how can I not feel guilty when I led so many people to worship the instruments of our destruction, all the while promising to keep them safe? Somehow, I must bury these emotions and focus on the present, as John does. If I cannot tear my mind away from what I have lost, I will lose all that I have. I cannot let that happen. I cannot let the gods take him too. You would have been proud of me. I controlled my breathing, just like you taught me even with tears streaming down my face, even with all the hate and anger in my heart. I kept my aim steady, and I killed them. I killed all of them, John. So why have you abandoned me too? You were the survivor, not I. These creatures should not have been enough to kill you. You were too strong. I need you too much. Please come back to me. I need to hear your voice. I need to see your smile. Please. Please. When I found them, I wanted to smash them to bits. Those eggs were the spawn of the monsters that slew my beloved, and they did not deserve my pity. Yet I also know they could help me. If I could raise these creatures as my own servants, even those traitorous gods of mine could not strike me down. I've constructed a great bonfire to mimic the warmth provided by their mother and gathered milk from the mightiest of the fallen beasts so I can feed them when they hatch. Hopefully, it is enough. No, it will be. I will raise these creatures. I will master them and I will survive. I promise you, John, I will live for both of us. When the creatures first hatched, I dared not go near them without a weapon in hand, but by now we've grown accustomed to each other. I have heard that a newborn creature may identify the first living thing it sees as a parent. I believe that has occurred here. I have become a mother to monsters. So be it. The gods have forsaken me and my love has been taken from me. So gone now is the Raya of old. Gone are the last vestiges of Hathor's joy and tranquility. Let my heart fill with Sakmet's might and fury. And with these monsters at my back and steel in my hands, let the desert know my wrath. Never shall anyone take from me again, be it god, beast or man. I have seen so much since we last spoke, John. 
There are secrets in this desert that you would never believe. Dangers that would have paralyzed me with fear when we first met. But I'm a different woman now. Would you recognize me still? Behind this black veil? I still find ways to help people, though not as I used to. I am no shepherd to the lost, no healer of wounded souls. Sometimes I simply defend the defenseless, or guide those few who seek the truth behind this cursed place. Perhaps one day, someone will find that truth. Strike down the false gods of this land, and at last grant me rest. Till that day comes, know that I will not falter. Know that I will carry on. And that concludes part two of the story of Raya and her explorer notes on Scorched Earth. And don't forget, if you're watching these stories over the Christmas week on my channel, then tomorrow at the same time, we'll be doing the story of John Decaya, our last survivor who appears to be an Apache Native American from the 19th century and Wild West times. Don't forget, if you're new here, subscribe for more art content from myself. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you. Thank you.